महागणपत मनसा स्मरा महादेव मुद शिसा नमा महागणपत मनसा स्मरा वैराग्यम is also translated in various ways they say detachment there's only two things get detached one is the the carriages in a train <laughs> they get detached the yeah, another It's not a very happy thing. The retinal detachment. <laughs> There is no other detachment. Suppose you put a distance from your family. You are detached. Why are you detached? Because you can't handle them, or they can't handle you. <laughs> But it means the same thing. If they can't handle you, it means you can't handle them. Okay, and therefore you are detached. <laughs> Even though you are away. From the family, and they travel with you because because you are afraid of them. They are all inside your head, and you are not detached. Never you get detached from anybody. It's all nonsense. There, there is no detachment. But they live in their own spaces. Why should you say that you are attached? You care for them, love them as they are. Why should there be such attachment? They live in their spaces. Give them the freedom to be in their own spaces. Then you are free. You are never free in a relationship. More than the freedom you give the other to be what the person is. That's how the freedom is. There is no other freedom. No other freedom. We are not free in that any other way. Because the more you want to free from oneself. I mean, free from a person, the more you are bound by the person. The very fact that you want to be free, free from that person, the person becomes a source of botheration, sitting right in your head. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a bug in your ear, <laughs> and therefore they become, they become insects in the bonnet of your head. That's it, <laughs> and they go on, go on creating problems for you. Learn. We need to be intelligent. We can't afford to be unintelligent because we are made to be intelligent. And if we if we don't use it, we will be in trouble. In a car, you have got a car, and it has got a steering wheel, it has got clutches, it has got brakes. You have to use them, and if you don't use them, you are not fit to be in the car driving. But you are given a car. There, at least outside car, you need not have it. But here, you can't afford to have, not to have this car. You can't say I don't want this car. It's given to you. Mind is given to you. Freedom is given to you. And intelligent faculty is given to you. And you have to live intelligently. Otherwise, you will always be. Meeting with one accident or the other. <laughs> Therefore, in a relationship, and you cannot but relate to the world. You are free in a relationship, and you have got to be free in a relationship, and that is possible only when you grant the person to be what the person is. You can have enough distance. So we are able to do that. So you go to a zoo. You go to a zoo, or you go to wildlife. You want to see wildlife, and you you keep a distance, and you allow the wildlife animals to be what they are. You don't want to convert the lion into a vegetarian. It might, it may appeal to all these people who are eating meat. Red meat to 
utilize this global warming business. I didn't include the tigers and wolves and lions. I didn't include them. <laughs> you enjoy the wildlife. Once you know that you are safe, what <laughs> you know you are safe, and you are in a vehicle. So moving in this big forest, Masai Mara, and then you are safe, and you see the lion standing there, you see the the wolves, the pack of wolves there, all that you are you you are you are comfortable. You like them. You you spend money to see them. That means you've got the capacity to give the wolf, give freedom for the wolf to be a wolf, a hyena to be a hyena, a, a lion to be a lion, a snake to be a snake. As long as you have drawn boundaries, you have to learn how to draw boundaries so that you are not hurt. Give them the freedom, don't be judgmental. Leave them alone. That's called objectivity. Abhairamya is objective. Look at this. You want security. Security from what? Security from what? Money can give you some security. There's no doubt about that. If somebody says, money, artham, anartham, this is one thing they know. They, 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 I'm a, they think that this is what Shankara is. Baja Govindam, Baja Govindam. Like this, they, they see. They think the Shankara was great. They quote this Baja Govindam. It, it's just a simple set of verses analyzing your Purusharthas. Artha is a Purushartha. Kama is a Purushartha. And it tells a limitation in Kama, in Artha. You have to go for moksha. It is they are talking about purusharthas. There is one. Artham anartham iti nityam bhavaya. Always, always think that money, this any type of wealth, real estate, etc., artham is anartha. It is not worthwhile, it will. In its wake, it will bring problem for you. You think you always think. This is how they, they translate. Anartham means not purushartham, real. That is what it says. Na artham anartham. They say anartham is dangerous. Money is not dangerous. Money is not dangerous. The moneyed fellow is dangerous. Perhaps. Money in fellow can be also a highly benevolent person. There's nothing to do with money. Whether money handles you or you handle money, that makes the difference. Artham anartham. Artha is not purushartha. That is what is written there. And they will quote artham anartham. All right. Don't, don't, uh, money is always dangerous for you. <laughs> then the fellow who has got money, what will you do? I want to distribute the money. Then he says, you give it to me. The fellow who, <laughs> who talks and he appoints himself as the recipient for that money. This is all silly. Money is Lakshmi for us. Lakshmi, we don't we don't look down upon it, we don't we don't say that is everything. That is, money is one lakshmi, one aspect of lakshmi. Home is another lakshmi, marriage is another lakshmi, children are another lakshmi, health is another lakshmi, dhairya, courage is another lakshmi, food is dhanyam, if food and everything is anna lakshmi, everything is then your well-being, is so bhakti lakshmi, it's all lakshmi. So, it's all, now you are talking, thinking about wholesome life. Yeah, we worship the wholesome. 
Jai, what do you worship your Vikram? One Lakshmi consists of all these Lakshmis. Griha Lakshmi, home. House is not home. Home can be a hut. A mansion cannot be a home. Home means in the members at home should, should have dialogue, should have communication, there should be prayer, there should be music, there should be culture and communication. A mansion may be there, it's not a home, it's a dysfunctional home. <laughs> That's a home. It may be a hut, it may be a mansion. Is nothing to do with the area of the house, something to do with communication, mutual care. So that is Lakshmi, because there is, there is domestic happiness. That is like Wherever there is happiness, there is Lakshmi. Griha Lakshmi, marital Lakshmi, progeny Lakshmi, yes, they all can give happiness. Unintelligent, you can tap out of every one of them unhappiness. So you need to be intelligent. And therefore, what I say, so this money itself is not a problem. What is necessary is you have to be objective. This is Vairagya. Don't expect money to provide you security. Money can provide some kind of security. Make your life more comfortable. Can free you from thinking whether I should spend or not. Whether I should give or not. Whether I should buy this or not. So this, this particular thinking, it can free you from and therefore you have a, an elbow room. That is all what we call freedom. Economic elbow room. Which is, which is, which is desirable. That's it. Don't say that is going to solve all my problems. That's not true. It can cause problems too. Because you have to invest it. When you have to invest, you have to worry. <laughs> you have to invest means you have to take risk. If you don't risk at the rate of inflation that's, that is available now, that's going on, you will be losing the value of money. So in order to retain the value of money, you should intelligently invest. That's what you think whenever you invest. Intelligently. Then afterwards you find you have been giving donations to people. One fellow said, I will give you 24 and a half percent. So 24 and a half percent means, so for, he gives interest, 24 and a half percent. Some fellow says, I will give you 24, a finance company. In India, there are, there are so many of them. And 24 and a half percent. And you, you invest with that fellow. And do you know what you are doing? You are, he, you are giving the, the 75 and a half percent, you are giving donation to that fellow. <laughs> That's it. You don't, <laughs> That's it. Forget about it. How he is going to give this money to somebody and that somebody is going to earn money paying him interest more than 24 and a half percent, 28 percent or 30 percent and then he will earn money and this fellow will get money and you will get your money back, forget it. Yalla uchu kurtu So, therefore it's better to put some sesame seeds on the top of it and give it to him. That means it's some kind of dana is giving. Forget. So you have to invest intelligently. However intelligent you are, the risk is always there. You buy stocks, it knows that until you you bought, 
it was going up. <laughs> the moment you bought, it goes down. <laughs> and in distress, you sell again, it goes down. <laughs> Just, this is called karma. <laughs> <laughs> this karma. What else is that? And anyway, so this fact being there, so we have to know what is Vairagya. We should, we have to free ourselves from the, the projected value upon things, a value that is not there. This is called Technically, Shobana Adhyasa. Adhyasa means Atasmin Tadbuddhi. Nahi hai, dekta hai. <laughs> that is Adhyasa. What is not there, you see. So, one object is mistaken for another object. Like a shell for a silver coin. That is Adhyasa. You see it something which is true for you, for you because you see it, but examine, it is not there. This is called adhyasa. The other adhyasa is, you see the object, you don't mistake the object, but then you, you, you impose, superimpose a value more than what it is, it has. This problem everybody has. In a relationship, you put all, all your, your oranges in one bag. You can say, you say, okay? <laughs> all oranges in one bag. And therefore, all go down. Turn wedge, that's the whole message now. <laughs> Even in this kind of uh, idioms and phrases and all that, no egg. Yek chik. I won't say that. From yek, yek, which came first? Chik or yek? From the egg, chicken came. And from the chicken alone afterwards, yek comes. And therefore, which came first? Yek or chik? Uh, yek. Hey, from where did the yek come? Oh, chik. Uh, where did the chik come from? Okay. Oh, yek. Then still you are saying, oh, it's not our one. And so yek, chik, chik, yek. Then it's a problem. So this is called unknown yasha. For this, I won't use that word. Did the seed come first or the plant come first? Which came first? Seed. From where did the seed come? Plant. Plant. From where did the plant come? Seed. Seed. Okay. <laughs> You make the example, what? Vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that is our traditional example. Bijankura, seed and the plant, the sprout, that is our original example. We are vegetarians. That's our example. Yek-chik is not a reason. Therefore, what I say, the each object has a value. Then, your own projections make that person more than what that person is. Afterwards, you say, I am disappointed by you. Why? I thought he was. That is true. He was, he was. He was not responsible for your disappointment. He is what he was. He continues to be. He was the same person who is here unless he has undergone some change, whatever. But that is what he, can, he is. But then your disappointment is from your own projection. You can say, I am disappointed my 
perception, wrong perception. Perfect. You are very objective. This is the beginning of Vairagya. Vairagya will never come unless you are objective. We have to shed all the shobhanadhyas. In love always this is a problem. And this is love is only anima animus. There is no reality about it. Honestly, I'm telling. This is satyam. One, this, every man has got his own anima. That anima has got an image. And it has got a nose. Anima has got a nose, has got some eyes, has got eyebrows. So this is height and weight also. This is anima. And if somebody says, I am, I am, I am, I love this person, the person says, I love my anima. This person seems to fit in my anima. Then afterwards, see, anima is not, is not the person you can live with. Because you, you are living with the person. Anima doesn't include thinking. Anima doesn't include snoring. Anima doesn't include, <laughs> I'm sorry, anima doesn't include a lot of other things. And therefore you will find this after 10 days, 15 days, of this honeymoon of a marriage, they find they have to live with the person, not with the anima. Anima disappears. And she has got animus, and this fellow has got anima, and therefore after a marriage, anima animus marry. 15 days afterwards, anima animus go. Then person and person, these two persons are there. Now they don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> this is the issue. We better understand all this. In the beginning, that's why you say, oh, he's wonderful, Indra, Chatra. So that is what you And that is the setup. Afterwards, all your problems in the unconscious buried get transferred on the person. And even though the person has nothing to do with your Indra and Chandra, original price he didn't deserve. And he was what he was. Now he becomes negative transference. Because you trust the person, you love the person, the very trusted person becomes an object of transference, negative transference, which if you have an insight about, it's a healthy thing, it can be resolved. Transference is healthy. If we can resolve it, and for which we should be informed, it is not there. Transference takes place because of trust, because of love, there was a book written by somebody, The Woman Who Loves Too Much. <laughs> it's a good book. I didn't read all the book, but I hear it right there. My psychology is my own understanding. It's not book, book, great psychology. That's why I'm very safe. <laughs> <laughs> Practical. And then what they say also, book read out the books also, they're not saying anything wrong, I'm telling. They are, they're all, they all have done a lot of work. We have to, we have to thank them. That Freud, Jung, all these as some kind of rishis, pioneer work they have done. We have to give the due stall. Einstein, Newton, all these are some kind of rishis. Means Gebo, Gebo ordinary people. Pathfinders, trendsetters. I'm not talking in fashion. <laughs> trendsetters. <laughs> And therefore, 
So this is called negative transference and transfer. It's all shobhana, ashobhana adhyasa. Positive adhyasa. Afterwards, opposite adhyasa. You blame for nothing. You begin to blame the very person that you love. So, it's a, it's a problem. Unless it is understood properly. If it is understood, nobody blames anybody. So it's a good, beautiful thing, it's a matter for celebration. Any blaming is celebration. They both know what's happened. <laughs> ah. For no reason, blame means celebration. Because something inside is coming up, that's it. Therefore, what I say, the objectivity, the more you are objective to your own feelings, you need not be free from your feelings. You have to be objective to your feelings. They have their own causes and you are objective. When I talk about Ishura, you will understand this still better. You are objective to your feelings. You welcome them. You don't twist them. And when you welcome, you, be, you have space between yourself and the feelings. So you are not the very feeling itself. Nor you are trying to get away from feelings, diverting yourself. You have enough space and freedom to have your feelings. That's growth. That's what spirituality is. That's what maturity is. No disturbance to yourself. No manipulation. Neither outside nor inside. This, this is a very very intelligent living. This is the beginning of Vairagya. Then you can see what do you basically want and what do you do to achieve that want. Both have no connection whatsoever. <laughs> That's Vairagya. Vairagya is not turning your head this way. The more it is something like, you know, when somebody, when you when you give somebody ladu, some sweet, he says, no, 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 I don't want sweet. Oh, that means he wants sweet. <laughs> he wants sweet and he's resisting because he's diabetic and he loves ladus and he wants to have the ladus, but he can't have the ladus. Therefore, he's got his own conflict. And so he doesn't say, no, I don't want. He won't say that. No, 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 I don't want. That which he wants. <laughs> this is called Vairagya. So this is, that's not Vairagya. He, this fellow wanted to cut his beard. It is too long and too difficult to manage. And therefore, he wants the birds begin building nests here, and therefore he wanted to get rid of this beard. Then somebody said, how to get rid of this beard? Yeah, come on, bring this scissors and cut. And he brought the scissors. You don't think that somebody does it, but this is my imagination. And then he brought the scissors, he went on cutting the bush that was there. Because this was bushy, and therefore there was a bush, and he was cutting the bush. Beard continues to be there. <laughs> and then he asked why he doesn't go. Eh? What you are doing and what do you want? Both have no connection. Cut either karna hai, udar nai karna hai. And similar, similarly, 
what you want and what you do, absolutely no connection. At least something is cut here. Here nothing cuts, nothing makes any sense. Why? Because I want something, some, I want to be happy. Let us put it experiential. I want is an experiential word which I am always afraid of. Because we are hunting experiences, we are experienced hunters. Experience hunter is called samsari. Experience hunter, that is why they gave a perfume this name, samsara. <laughs> it's a French perfume. I know. Samsara. The advertisement itself, you can get that. So they all stylized letters. Samsara. Wafting. Samsara. Experience. It's a perfume name. Why did they give Samsara? I don't know. It's a good name. For perfume, it is Samsara experience. An experience hunter is a Samsara. A new divine experience I want. That means you are a divine Samsara. <laughs> भारत देश हिताय कुरु सेवां तुम कुरु सेवां तुम कुरु सेवां तुम कुरु सेवां